Hey, so as you know, we have started a new project. And for this project, you're actually going to be doing abstract art. So what is abstract art? Abstract means a non-lifelike visual representation of real-world objects, people, and scenes that are usually different for other people to recognize. So abstract art doesn't jump out and say, this is what I'm about. Instead, abstract art gives the viewer a chance to interpret through visual hints that the artist provides. And so abstract art portrays what an artist feels and thinks rather than, rather than what he or she sees. An abstract artist uses colors and shapes to express his or her emotions and ideas. So abstract art gives you freedom to explore artwork and assign your own meaning to the piece. So what we're looking at right now is um, just different examples of artists who maybe were wanting the viewer to feel happy. Um, and so the reason that these come across as happy paintings is because of the way that the artists use color and line and shape and all of those things that we just talked about. So they're really showing their feelings through these choices that the artists made. Um, and so if we go from this to this, so these look more sad. And the reason that they look more sad is because um, the color is less saturated. So these colors are a little bit more dull and dark and kind of gloomy feeling. And so we also can tell that the lines used in both of these are different. So these lines are kind of fun and kind of crazy. They're all going all different directions. And these are more straight and serious or um, kind of web-like, so a little eerie or creepy. Um, and so looking at these different things, we can see how our choices as an artist can affect how our painting is interpreted. So many people think that abstract art is about nothing, but in reality, abstract art is an exploration of elements and principles of art, and meaning comes from how those are used together to create a visual or emotional experience. So as we go through these next slides, um, you will see in a little bit just how these different famous abstract artists um, use those elements. But right now I'm going to explain your project. So after you have practiced drawing your four things as realistic as possible, so you're supposed to draw an object, an animal, a place, and a memory. Um, so the reason that you're doing that is because many abstract artists are incredible drawers, but they just choose to paint in an abstract way. They want to show these things, show these emotion, um, instead of focusing on what is actually seen. And so what you're going to do is you're going to choose one of those things that you drew, and you're going to draw it and create an abstract version of it inspired by one of the famous artists that we're about to see. And so we're going to go through these different artists, and so just pay attention to different styles that you might like or want to do yourself. And so you can use acrylic paint, collage materials, oil pastels, or colored pencils to do this project. So you've got some freedom, and so it might have to do with the artists that you choose. Um, so maybe wait and look at all these different styles and then choose what type of medium you want to use. So this is a picture of just some of the artists that we're about to talk about. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is Robert Delaunay, and so he was a French artist. Um, so his style was really known for um, just these different geometric-like compositions with vibrant color and a contemporary subject matter that um, just conveyed just this modern life and its innovations. So it showed a lot of um, different buildings. So we see the Eiffel Tower um, and we see just the way that he almost kind of moved towards this cubist style in his art. Um, so as his style matured, he developed the, his style to more mosaic-like squares. Um, and so this kind of moved towards cubism, as I said. And so he was known for movement and just this celebration type look in his art. 
And so his Eiffel Tower painting is really famous because he painted that a lot of different times. And um, so, yeah, so he, as you can tell, used color and shape and line and all those things we talked about within his work. And so this is Alexander Calder, and he was born in Philadelphia. Um, so he's the most commonly associated with the introduction of the mobile to fine arts. So he was really known for his sculptures. Um, and these mo mobiles were, were these whimsical sculptures that sway in the breeze. Um, and so these ended up kind of transforming themselves, and you see these figures almost going on into his paintings and so he's less known for he's he's less known for his paintings and he's more known for his sculptures but we're gonna look at his paintings um, and so in his paintings we see just these really organized structures um, of shapes and objects within these paintings and so he really just painted forms um, and used a very limited color palette um, and he so he said that Circles and spheres and discs were his main focus so that he thinks that they represent more than what they just are. But he also created a unique language of shapes resembling triangles and boomerangs. So he referred to those shapes as spheres too. He just said that they were spheres of a different shape. And so then we have Vasily Kandinsky. And so Kandinsky was born in Russia. Um, and so his main thing was music. So he said that music is the ultimate teacher. And so he viewed music as the most, um, most important form of non-objective art. And so he thought that musicians could evoke images and listen in listeners' minds merely with sounds. And so he strove to do the same through his paintings. He wanted his viewers to feel these feelings, um, and almost like listening to music, he wanted you to look at his painting and feel these things that you feel when you're listening to music. And so he really wanted to produce um, just these rich paintings that alluded to sound and brought you this sensation. Um, and so he jo enjoyed painting about spiritual things and about the future and a coming new age. And so um, we just see his use of lines um, and color in these different compositions. And so then we have Paul Klee. So Paul Klee was born in Switzerland and is considered both a German and a Swiss painter. Um, he's known for his colorful and fantasy style of art, showing a world of semi-abstract and dreamlike images. So um, you can kind of still tell what they are, like in this red balloon one, um, but it's very geometric and very simplified. And so he explored a new expressive and largely abstract um, language of symbols and signs. So he used arrows and letters and musical notes and black lines standing in for a person or an object. Um, yeah, you see those frequently in his work. And so the next one we have is Joan Miro. And so he was a Spanish painter. So Miro had a new kind of style where he filled space with objects and shapes from the artist's imagination. So these are often recognizable forms, such as a moon, or a simplified dog, or a ladder, um, or a bush. Um, and so, yeah, these he often worked with a limited color palette, and so the colors he used were really simple, but they were bold and expressive. So you see, even in this middle painting, he really only used a couple of colors. Um, and so he thought that with those, with those choices, the viewer could really start to feel what he was wanting them to. And so then we have Umberto Boccioni, and he was an Italian painter and sculptor. Um, so he was part of the Futurist movement, which means that he wanted to get away from a traditional artistic way and replace it with an energetic celebration of this new machine age that they were in. And so there was a focus on creating this unique vision for the future, and many Futurist artists incorporated landscapes and new technologies such as trains, cars, and airplanes into their work. So Boccioni also 
integrates the cubist use of collage like numbers and straight lines that divide these planes into different sections um, and so he had a very expressionistic style um, to his work. So I will flip through these artists one more time just so you can get a good look and try to decide who you want to use as your inspiration. Okay, so that's it. You can get to work and let me know if you have any questions.